I tell you something, Sam, it's a lot of hard work that's happening on this end of the world as well. Uh, certainly is a lot of interesting conversation that is unfolding as well here at Zimek 2013. And right now uh, joining me is the former CEO of Cadelco. He's, uh, it's of course, the world's number one copper producer. And he's here on behalf of the World Bank. And this as part of South-South Corporation, where you've got uh, the southern countries learning lessons from each other how better to improve their investment climate uh, joining me now of course is uh, the uh, as I said the former CEO of Cadelco and um, his Jose Pablo Ariano, he joins us live right now. Jose, thanks so much for joining us uh, this you. afternoon. Well, let's get straight into to what extent you've been able to draw uh, parallels with the Chilean mining experience and that of Zambia. Well, what's interesting is that these two countries have copper as number one export and as number one pro, uh, item of production in, in our economies. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot to learn and to exchange experiences. Actually, in the 50s, 60s, and till mid-70s, the two countries produced almost the same amount of copper. And since then, we've managed to increase production, though Zambia has recently been able to increase. But in the past, during the 90s, um, and a good part of the 2000s, we were able to increase several times copper production, so that now we supply a third of the total world production of copper. Yeah, take us through uh, what we're looking at in terms of comparatives on that productive scale between Zambia and, uh, and Chile at this stage, because of course these are two countries that have embarked on divergent paths when it comes to economic policy and regulatory frameworks. Yes, we've uh, um, increased, as I said, about nine times yeah. the copper production during this period. Uh, this is the result first of our own, of our state-owned company, Codelco, that has uh, increased production o over these years. Uh, and at the same time, uh, in addition to that, we've opened to private investment that started in the late 80s, mm -hmm. the, during the 90s, large investment of the large private companies that can come to the country and have increased production. So in addition to Codelco's production, the state-owned company, we have those private investments. All that together has uh, allowed us to increase production in the manner I've described. Taking a look at uh, the state-owned uh, company specifically, what role do you see government playing in, in this space? Because there's a lot of debate at this stage whether or not government should be a part of a business activity or simply create the environment that is conducive to private sector investment. Well, it depends. It depends on how the government runs the company. If the company, and I think that's important for the success that Codelco has achieved during this period, mm -hmm. what I call the governance of the company, what, are the, what is the mission of the company, what the government demands from, the, from the, any state-owned company, in this, one, in this case a, a copper producer, if from government you demand them to do many things, uh, min, many businesses, it's likely that's going to fail. But if you ask the company, to produce copper efficiently, to be competitive, and to generate profits that will be used by, by the government to fund social programs, to, fu to fund the mm -hmm. different needs that the, the country faces, then it's likely that it, it's going to be successful. Easier said than done, though. So what lessons are you bringing practically to Zambia? Well, easier said, as you say, but uh, I think you have to strengthen institutions. You have to build the capacity, the respect certain basic principles like, like this one. The company has to be run following a, a clear mission, in this case, to maximize the results, to favor the, the budget. The company doesn't have to try to do many different businesses in different areas and has to let the government, the budget policy, to allocate those resources to needs, to the most, uh, and hopefully to the people most in need. But that's the government role through the budget. The company role is to be as efficient as possible in uh, generating, the, in uh, exploiting the, the, the mineral wealth. It's interesting that we have this conversation because uh, the rhetoric that you, uh, you bring to the four talks of the success of a state-owned mining company and the lessons to 
be learned in terms of how we can manage state-owned mining uh, companies so that they do contribute effectively to any economy. Looking at some of the headlines that have emerged and I've picked up from uh, The Economist, for example, we've got, yes, Cadelco is still mining over a tenth of the world's copper, but it's seen its share of Chile's output dwindle from 75% in, uh, in 1990 to 32% by, by 2010. So, you know, how do you respond to that? Because you almost have <coughs> divergent bits yes, of information that come to the fore. Because we do two things. One is to run Codelco, the state-owned company, in an appropriate manner, following the rules I, I mentioned. And at the same time, we develop the environment for private investments to complement what mm -hmm. Codelco is doing on their own minds, on their own exploration, on their own business. So it's, there is no contradiction in having an efficient state-owned company and at the same t time having private investors running, do exploration and running companies. So as a share of the total production, yes, Codelco has diminished, but in, 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 in absolute terms, we are producing more than in the past and the country is benefiting from investment, from foreign investment and, uh, and, and domestic investment that are private ones that are running and exploiting other mines and paying the taxes so that the, we can fund uh, with that social and different uh, government needs.